you about today. Um, but the second part of that study was to try to understand the factors that contribute to the development of case contamination. And uh, that's what this presentation will cover. So just to give you an idea briefly of our methods, we enrolled 132 soldiers and we fitted them with two weeks daily, or two weeks disposable lenses for daily wear. And uh, we gave them two care systems to use, one for each eye, and it was a rinse only regimen. And we then randomly assigned these subjects to come back for a follow up visit at either seven days, 14 days, or 30 days after being dispensed with the new contact lenses. At the follow up visit, we conducted a range of objective and subjective tests, including questionnaires about uh, comfort and a compliance assessment, and I'll talk a little bit further about that in the second presentation. We cultured their cases and contact lenses for bacterial contamination, and the subjects weren't aware that we were doing this so that they didn't scrub or clean their cases before uh, coming in for their follow-up visit. We then uh, collated all of our data for a statistical modelling of trying to understand what factors were associated with the development of case contamination. I will just uh, briefly show you the results that we did get for the contamination rates. Overall, between the 7-day, 14-day, 30-day follow-up groups, we saw no difference in contamination rates, with about 60% of cases contaminated uh, at those follow-up times. What we did see, though, is more moderate or heavy contamination, the orange and yellow there, in the two-week and one-month-old cases to the one week old cases. In our statistical model, the factors that came out as significant are presented here in blue, as well as the other factors that approached significance in black. The, um, the most significant factor that was associated with case contamination was reuse of the disinfecting solution. Uh, in the actual software program, the odds ratio couldn't be calculated because it approached infinity in every subject that reused their solution developed case contamination. The uh, next risk factor was male gender. So males had a 6.8 times greater risk of contamination. <laughs> um, I was recently presenting with uh, Brian Holden in uh, meeting in Western Australia and he just said, we all know males are dirty. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> sure that I would go to that extreme, but certainly that was interesting because um, male gender is a risk factor for microbial keratitis, and that's been shown in a number of studies. So this is the first time we've seen this for case contamination. The other um, significant findings, increased contact lens readability um, was also associated with a higher risk of case contamination. And there were a number of compliance aspects. So. Uh, contamination of the body tip was uh, associated with a 5.5 times increased risk, as well as failing to rinse the case after discarding the used solution, a three times increased risk, and then just overall the non compliance score um, that we calculated the higher the non compliance, uh, the greater risk of developing contamination. So just to summarise, we've been able to identify a number of risk factors associated with case contamination. Uh, you, some of these are modifiable and some of them uh, potentially aren't, uh, but certainly reuse of the disinfection solution, that's been something that's been identified as a, um, a, a significant factor in the recent fusarium and acanthamoeba keratitis outbreaks. Uh, and, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, male gender we know is associated with microbial keratitis as well. Uh, certainly I think the key things from this study are that um, we know there are a number of compliance related aspects that do contribute to the development of contamination and require emphasis with our patients. So in particular, not reusing the solution, making sure to um, empty out the old solution from the lens case, not to contaminate the and uh, possibly to be aware that our male patients are at greater risk and consider if they're likely to be non-compliant as well, that maybe an alternative option such as daily disposables might be a better, better option for them than, uh, than trying to get them to actually 
keep their cases clean. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Um, oh, and I'll move straight into the next one. Uh, so as I said, uh, we also did look at compliance during this study, and I'll just go over some of the actual uh, results that we saw here. We were particularly surprised to see that um, we saw some significant changes in compliance um, between the subjects that came back at one week versus one month. So this is what I'll cover today. Um, we know that compliance decreases over time, and we know that depending on the questions that you ask and the way that you uh, discuss things with patients, up to 100% of patients are non-compliant in some aspect of, of their contact lens care and maintenance regimen, and that non-compliance is associated with a number of different complications. And I apologise, there was a there was a picture of a microbial keratitis eye there. So um, we wanted to look at the how compliance was affected in terms of time from which you gave instructions to patients. So the same study design. The thing that I'll mention here is that we gave both detailed verbal and written instructions to all of the subjects in the study. And we, when they came back at review, we asked a series of questions related to their care and maintenance, and they had the um, option of uh, answering that they always did something or sometimes or um, often or never did something, so that we had a scale of zero to three where they got a zero score if they were fully compliant and a three score for that question if they were not fully non-compliant or totally non-compliant. And we um, developed an con- overall non-compliant score that varied from zero to 21. So in our overall um, study group, we only found that 10% of subjects were fully compliant. Um, and uh, the numbers there for the follow-up group, so again, that's the second day follow-up group, the 14 days and the 30 days. And we saw a um, significant difference between the subjects that came back at seven days versus one month with significantly higher non-compliance scores at the one month time point. Some of, um, some of the questions now I'll highlight and just highlight the overall results. So the subjects were instructed to rinse their lenses prior to disinfection. It was a rinse only regimen that we were using at the time. Um, this graph here shows that uh, the group one subjects, about 70% of them were always uh, compliant or self-reported that they were always compliant with this step. By one month, we see that only 40% were compliant with this step. So there was a significant drop off uh, over that time frame. Contamination of the bottle tip. This wasn't statistically significant, but this is the kind of trend that we were seeing with a number of the questions where you saw an increase in the um, non-compliance and a, and a decrease in the compliance. Some of the other behaviours, we saw very high rates of non-compliance with um, care of the case. 60% failed to air dry the case, 54% failed to rinse the case after um, inserting their lenses. We had about 10% rinsing with tap water even though we told them not to use tap water under any circumstances. And even though we gave everyone the solutions for free, at least 5 to 10% still reuse their solution rather than changing the solution each time they're disinfected. And as with previous studies, age, gender, ethnicity, contact lens wearing experience didn't affect compliance. So um, we can conclude that we can see significant decreases in compliance over a one month time frame. And uh, we really need to be keeping in mind that just because we've explained something to our patients recently, it doesn't mean that they've actually um, taken that on board and are following our instructions. And particular emphasis on some of the more non- most common non-compliant behaviours, such as the case care uh, aspects and, and um, rinsing prior to disinfection, but also emphasis on some of those high-risk behaviours that I talked about in the previous presentation, um, particularly reusing the solution, contamination of the body tip and um, using tap water. So thanks very much.